Hi, I'm Zemless, and I'm standing up today for this one. Today, I'm going to show you how I got vaguely uh, motion detection um, out of using the UV. So I mentioned in a previous video that when we had the power to do buffer-based stuff like this, you could do stuff where, uh, if you focus on this, you can see I masked out the blue of the drumstick and the still kind of blue-green bit I used to use the hue to get there, but this guy, the frame blur. And you can see how when this moves, you can't see him here. And that's how that works, is that there's frame blurred version and the unblurred version. I subtract the unblurred from the blurred so that there's the bit that you can only see, which is only when you move. So using the buffer stuff where you say, okay, I could take out now the RGB value of only this buffer on top of also the, the, the uh, well, rather, the B value, just the blue, also just the blue value of this buffer, the regular bloom buffer, because this is what's determining basic volume. More blue, more volume. I put these out into an XYZ controller, which is using pretty hefty modifiers to get it to states. Which, with smoothing on by default, I found this to be perfectly viable. It's not even a little bit bad. You, um, it's not like rigidly, it's not like Wii plus motion perfect, but we, but you get the feel for it. It's just like a regular, I'm using a drumstick, but just like, a, you know, playing a drum. You get used to what, uh, actuation delay feels like in order to get the result to be in time. And as long as the motion is possible, that's always, uh, within your grasp. So how this is working is that I'm applying the XYZ values to this voltage controller output in FL, which is just these two knobs, which is set to the nothings, but when they do, you get the values. See how the number two dude there only moves when it moves, and that's really cool. Um, but way down there, in here, my synths, is a uh, ADAT um, output, which is where that voltage control is going. And I really wish you could see that from this angle, but um, I didn't think it that far ahead. Um, but basically, this lights up when those two knobs move. And I'm applying that to just level and some parameters inside the DPO right here. And uh, just one of those is the output level happening over here based on just the blue value. So more blue, level. no blue, no level. I mean, there's some blue, but I, you know, adjusted threshold and whatnot to get that to work. So um, I'm gonna make an entire video that is all about making masks, just because a huge part of this is being able to isolate colors, because you saw this happen too. And that's not being able to kind of like rotate the color and have it actuate as though it's like a thing. And you can go even farther with that because like I said, about when you do masking, you isolate colors, all of what I've been doing and showing is all so far is, has been done to a color. So you could be like having, oh, this is all these things that are happening on the blue side. And then I can shift it over to the green side and be like, okay, now here's this totally other thing and have it like Leslie between them as fast as my frame rate allows. That's a big part of this. That's a whole new angle that I have to consider. And it's been a real interesting deal giving a damn about that particular limitation uh but that's what's up now yeah so this is this is this is a test this is the example that shows up we got there with uh the, the the blending to get uh essentially the face canceled result we're doing face cancel tricks but on visual stuff instead of audio and it's really I, it's just i'm just endlessly tickled by how cool this is so if we turn off the output output we can go to our first buffer here and because I turn out the buffer, it's going to screw itself up. Let's go back to three. There we go. So if it tries, it's damn this, but when I'm, I try my name. But that's what that looks like. You put the um, unmust with version. Like that's just the not blur. Here's what the blur looks like. Yeah, that was the blur. So that's what the not blur looks like. So I'm subtracting. It's math. Doesn't matter how, which order you subtract it. So then, boof, and then biff. 
uh, getting the frame blur is just it's just visual delay, literally like as though that. And then I'm using Bloom to kind of because I mentioned before in the previous video that like the whole way it calculates blue value is that it kind of accepts the screen's x y area as a zero to one hundred percent coverage value. So like if you took a fader and just put a circle in the center of the screen, you turn the fader up and it filled up the whole screen. Like the one hundred percent would be fully covered and not a hundred would be however less of that covered it is. Which is to say that that's not a whole hell of a lot of coverage. This is why the values are so small. Is because they like that. Um, so the Bloom's idea is to make it so that it's actually quite a bit boofed up, so that uh, it's it. There's just bigger value. Um, it gets away a bit in the in the, like not unlike regular ass compression, because that's basically what that is. Um, uh, expanding it like that means that you lose the granularity of dynamic range. But that's also like essentially what we're doing. That this is just just that. At a different angle, at a different, at a different end of the equation, as opposed to doing it here at the beginning, and it's, I'm essentially doing it on both sides because that's how low the values are. Um, but it works out, yeah. So that was this is just like a really like this is the beginning of excellently cool stuff because I want to do um, multicolored like make many tracked items that most like, that a lot of stuffs responding to. <laughs> at the same time even and uh these experiments are helping me figure out the best practices because i i actually like i'm i'm definitely feeling the importance of doing things like storyboarding when you're doing it like a movie anything visual because at a certain point it really doesn't matter what tool you're using it, it's gonna run into a particular bottleneck where because you've made a certain choice way at the beginning you are locked in and you have to live with it so learning how to like, um, or learning what certain pitfalls there exist in smaller scale is super important to know how, when you do make these plans, just what not to do. And I literally find myself drawing out like little pictures of ZGE buffers and things and like putting out little, like it's, it's, I've never had to do that for, for music stuff. I've like, people have tried to make me like I've, they, there's definitely been classes that tried to like, you know, sheet music and stuff like that. And then also bands and things and tabs and make, you know, MIDI, it's MIDI is great, but like, I've never, I've never had to like sketch out on a, on a notepad, a visualization of what I'm doing with a piece of software because, well, <laughs> let's, let's kind of get ahead of ourselves too hard about what we're doing here. This is a kind of a weirdo plugin. Like, look at this guy. This is, um, this is, like uh, a lot, actually, a lot of fun talks been going around about just FL in general and the history of it, and how it began its life as a sequencer. And I, I've mentioned before, I think, about how I kind of look at this as like the way that FL 1.0 was in the 90, 1999 or whatever, 98, whatever it was new. The idea that like, yeah, it, this right now, this is a visual plugin that's inside a DAW. I would not totally fault it if it became its own standalone thing. Uh, it's kind of on. I mean. ZG, ZG itself is a standalone thing. I'm not saying it wouldn't do that. I'm just saying that, like, the FL integrated visual editor aspect of it and not necessarily the literal code base upon which our little corner of our usage of it has been utilizing. Although, I am learning how to do that, too. Uh, thanks to extremely helpful people in the Alpha Forum who will literally give me tutorials on how to do that. Oh, man, is this stuff good. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun time. I hope you guys like this. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. I'll put this uh, project in the description of this video. This is the 20.9 uh, Beta 2. Um, and as usual, have a nice day.